Shama Sawad, the Seattle City Council member, District 3, Independent Socialist and Socialist Alternative, uh, seattle.gov slash council dash S-A-W-A-N-T. Shama, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us, and congratulations on, on winning in Seattle. You're winning another seat on the city council as a socialist. What's it, what's it like running as a socialist in Washington State? Well, you know, I think the question that might be uppermost in people's minds while listening is that, you know, was uh, running as a socialist, you know, the S word, you know, was that a barrier in any way? Did you have to explain it or justify it? I will say that, you know, both in our first campaign for city council in 2013 and this time, and also the two years that I've been on the city council running our office and winning 15 and so on, it was never, the word socialist was not only not a barrier, it has been a pull of attraction, especially for younger people who are looking around them and saying, you know, in this post-recessionary economy, this has been a joyless recovery for us. We haven't gotten any share uh, of the wealth that is being created in Seattle, and the 1% in Seattle is going wealthier by the day, and we are saddled with student debt, skyrocketing rent, uh, completely dysfunctional mass transit, and, uh, you know, they're looking for alternatives. So I would say that really what's happened in the last three years, you know, since we launched our campaign for 2013, is that we have really galvanized the attention of, of people who, working people who are otherwise, you know, they're disgusted, legitimately so, by corporate politics, but are now uh, excited that it's not only possible to win one time as a socialist when the ruling class was admittedly asleep at the wheel, it's, uh, but, you, you know, it's possible to not, not only be not marginalized on the city council, but really essentially commandeer the political agenda of the city. And then it is possible to run for re-election, have the entire corporate establishment be against you and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars against you, and yet you can win again. Hmm. And you did. What is? Uh, do, do you think that uh, anything from your campaign and your successes could or should inform the uh, the Democratic Party and the Sanders campaign? You know, I think that uh, the lessons from Seattle, first of all, are not only for Seattle. They, they do apply nationwide. And it definitely is something that has implications for those millions of people nationwide who are uh, really electrified by Bernie Sanders' message, you know, for political revolution against a billionaire class. You know, the most intriguing question that everybody is asking right now uh, as we head into the presidential election year is, is a socialist electable in the United States? Well, we've shown, yes, a socialist is electable. But then the question that, uh, you know, the corporate media always asks and, you know, tries to uh, give this just a uniquely Seattle spin, like, you know, this is only possible in Seattle. Uh, and I would say that the conditions that are propelling young people not only into our campaigns, but to fight for 15, into a real struggle against big business in Seattle, those conditions are not unique to Seattle. This is happening everywhere. There's not a single metropolitan area that is not facing the same issues as, as Seattle, you know, racial and economic inequality, uh, you know, racially biased policing, low wages, uh, the 1% getting richer and richer, skyrocketing rent, increasing homelessness. This, this is the norm in every metropolitan area. What is unique about Seattle in, the, in these last few years is that we've had an organization, my organization, Socialist Alternative, really uh, demonstrating in, in a very concrete, material way what the left nationally needs to do, which is we need to break from the Democratic Party establishment, that stranglehold of lesser evilism. We need to build independent politics. We need to run our own working class candidates who will run, uh, but, you know, not taking a penny from big business. They will run on a bold, progressive agenda, and it can be done. So really, the question now for the nationally for the left is how are we going to seize the moment, you know, build independent working class politics and really raise the question of you know, a, a party for the 99%. Yeah. It's it's it it seems that if the Democratic Party doesn't doesn't start embracing the 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 base basically you know who who I think most most people who are uh, act activists in the Democratic Party uh, hewing back to FDR's vision of this country 
um, would call themselves democratic socialists or socialist alternatives or you know whatever you want to call it. Um, if if the Democratic Party doesn't embrace you and the values that you hold or candidates like you, I think they're going to be completely irrelevant. I think that uh, in in people's minds, they, they are, are already irrelevant in the right. sense that the the establishment has is held, the, both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party establishment are held in deep contempt by working people. You know, you only have to look at uh, the low voter turnouts. Right. You know, last midterm election, we had the uh, lowest voter turnout since the Second World War. That's a, you know, just a, that's an indictment of corporate politics and how deeply disenchanted working people are. Look at the uh, abysmal approval ratings of U.S. Congress. That is another indication of how deeply disgusted people are. But the, but what's what's hamstrung politics is that there has never been. I mean, in in living memory, it hasn't been a real alternative to that. Uh, you know that that whole uh, thing that people are disgusted by. So you know people don't know where to go. Right. And 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 you're right. And and if there is a potential for that establishment to be. And defeated, as we have shown, you know, that there is a potential to do that everywhere. But it's not going to happen automatically. People are disgusted by the establishment, but they don't know where to turn. And it's not, you know, it's not going to fall from the sky. The left has to do the uh, difficult, but, in, you know, critical groundwork of building those organizations like Socialist Alternative has to provide a real alternative, a pole of attraction. And... You know, I'll, I'll, and just to give you, uh, give everybody a sense of how much potential there is, let me give you a concrete example from on the ground in Seattle. Uh, our opponent, well, uh, you know, <laughs> when, went around saying she's a Democrat, it was very, uh, you know, proudly endorsed by a multitude of corporate Democrats. Uh, she had a PAC launched, uh, you know, there was a PAC launched against me. You, who do you think was uh, funneling money into that PAC? It was... Republicans, one of them is a former bundler for Mitt Romney, and big big money Democrats. So corporate candidates who call themselves Democrats are being uh, courted, you know, and they're being bankrolled by Republicans and big money Democrats. And here I am running as a socialist, and who and have we united? We have united ordinary working people and activists in the Democratic Party and also left-wing Democratic uh, Party politicians like Pamela Jayapal and Larry Gossett, who, who have endorsed who endorsed my campaign and who are carrying out a progressive agenda of their own at the county and the state level. We mm -hmm. have united uh, them with socialists. We have uh, brought together the Black Lives Matter activists, the environmental activists, and um, you know social justice activists in general. And that shows that there's a potential to build a broad-based, independent, uh, you know, working people's political organization, you know, so in, in short, a party for the 99%. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think your success demonstrates that it's possible and, and how it can be done. Um, it's, uh, this this is so... How, how do you respond when somebody says America is not a socialist nation? <laughs> I, I respond by uh, saying that if you look at the polls, you know, it's a very, very tangible way of uh, assessing what the consciousness is of American people. If you go to fair.org, you know, fairness and accuracy in reporting, mm -hmm. uh, if you go to fair.org, you know, they have compiled opinion polls, these are statistical polls, on a whole spectrum of social and political issues. And it demonstrates that America uh, is, you know, by and large, socialist. About, uh, Shama. publicly funded health care, right. education, uh, you know, should... Uh, Got it. Shama, we're, we're out of time. I'm sorry. Shama Swant, hang on just a second here. You're listening to Tom Hartman. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. Seattle City Council member and proud socialist just re-elected Shama Swant. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Good talking with you. We'll be right back.